now we could go into into the details of the culture, but I, I still want to stay on a little bit on track with, with the earnings in one second. And uh, I've also shown that tweet already um, for the audience here. And um, maybe you can, because it's like, yeah, pretty good uh, uh, summary, like the catalyst from earnings call. If you've uh, tweeted this, maybe you can comment on this because we talked about um, now Optimus a little bit. And I totally agree. It's totally interesting as well. For me, the next topic is also like a huge deal that nobody really still can grasp because the upper, like the margins on the mega packs, for example, are very good. Uh, that's of course Tesla, Tesla Energy, and the, the energy storage. Um, and yeah, so maybe you can comment on on your your catalysts uh, from <laughs> earnings call here. Yeah. So yeah. the reason that factories is all in caps there is because it's plural, and we've known this. Of course, I I was the first person. The Elon Musk mission was the very first place that anybody started talking about Lathrop, anybody started talking about the energy rollout. We were so far ahead on this subject and we're still far ahead because we're still talking about what the future is on these energy storage. Mm -hmm. We're not yeah. talking about one factory or two factories or three factories or four factories. We're talking about a, a factory, maybe multiple factories on every continent, maybe mm -hmm. 20 factories, maybe 25 factories before it's done. We're talking about $400 billion a year in sales. And Elon says that's going to be at 25%. So you're talking about $100 billion a year of earnings just from energy storage in 2030. That's mm -hmm. the plan. And it isn't hard. As a factory guy, I can tell you, I look at how hard it is to make a car, not interested. How hard it is to make a battery, oh my gosh, never mind. But I mm -hmm. think I could probably set up that Lathrop deal. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I couldn't do the software and I probably couldn't come up with some of the techniques that they're using in the in the in the cooling and whatnot. But as far as setting up that factory line and making that thing go, that's kind mm -hmm. of a no brainer. And so to put up another one in Shanghai and I think they'll put one in eastern eastern United States, probably one in Canada near a lot of the resources up in Canada. Makes sense. Um, yeah. Then a couple in Europe, a couple, a couple, you know, more in the a Asian area, probably one in Australia again, because the materials are right there. I wouldn't be surprised to see them put up a refinery, mm -hmm. a lithium refinery in Australia, along with a, uh, a mega pack factory. So anyway, whole bunches of, of amazing opportunities, mm -hmm. but that's one that people are like, oh, I see. It's not very sexy, not that interesting. Well, a hundred billion dollars a year in profit in seven years from now, you just, and this is a product that they're already making and they've already told us they're going to do it. And you can investigate the TAM, the total addressable market. You can find out that it's, it's infinite. I don't know if you're aware with it. I had this interview where uh, the, this expert was telling me the number one, re, the number one use for these is actually utility, um, the utilities being able to manage their loads. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about even mm -hmm. putting it with the wind or putting it with the solar. Even if there's no wind or no solar, you can buy these uh, batteries and you can put them in as load managers. And that's the number one use right now that people are buying them for is for load managing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then you've got solar and wind. Then you've got factories and governments. Then you've got the actual superchargers where you need to put them in wherever there's a supercharger or a mega charger for the uh, for the for the semi trucks and other electric mm -hmm. trucks. The, it's just unbelievable how many are going to be sold, not just by Tesla but by others. But getting to that 400 billion thing in sales in 2030 seems like a no brainer, and yet. Mm -hmm. Why isn't Wall Street got that figured into the price? <laughs> I, I, I We don't know. <laughs> I can't figure We it out. Know. Makes yeah. no sense. Yeah, it makes no sense. I wanted to ask you, uh, does that tie in that, that the mega packs, for example, also uh, replace those peaker plants? Is that also tied yeah. into this management? Uh, so like no, the, the load is, management? Peaker plant is like the third. So, so, okay. the, so the, the management of the grid, that's mm -hmm. the number one the number one TAM right now. Okay. Yeah. Then you have below that, you've got the actual solar and wind. Again, maybe your audience knows or doesn't know 
what was holding up solar and wind for the last three years? Storage. storage they didn't yeah. have any storage. Exactly. So it's, yeah, exactly. So now that they've got the storage, they can go crazy putting in these wind and solar places. Uh, new reporting out last week was that uh, a, a very conservative uh, estimate was one third of all energy produced in 2030 will be solar and wind. Uh, one third of all energy. That's produced. absolutely crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So, and that was a conservative. That was like the uh, a government agency of some kind that was coming out with that number. So you can imagine how conservative that is. So yeah, <laughs> that, so peaker plants come under that. And then you've okay. got the in-house use, eating your own dog food, you know, putting it in to the uh, various uh, Tesla. And it's not just the superchargers and mega chargers they're putting in what? I forget, 160? No, how many is it they're putting down in Texas? In Austin? Uh, yeah, it's something a, over, it's over 100, I know that. 160 uh, of them down in Texas? Yeah, yeah it could it's be 160. Just for factory. Yeah. <laughs> just for the one factory. <laughs> <laughs> and how how do you think um because i think that's very interesting when tesla starts to to get to run rates let's say 10 million cars in 2030 right and um now we play out the scenario and then we uh, in, in like in in com in combination with with tesla energy what do you think how tesla can utilize if the market starts to be saturated of of the car market i mean it's totally now we are in utopia territory now but still uh how do you think that that ties into that? Because for me, it's interesting. I, I think they have the resources. They have the 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 the, the batteries. Oh, we can, this year car sales a little bit down. Let's produce more mega packs. Yeah, that's my my theory. But what do you think of that? I, I think it's very yeah, interesting. Yeah, no, so so uh, when we were finishing up the book, and we had mm -hmm. already done all of the moats, and we had 21 moats in the book. If you, if people, if you don't buy the book for any other reason, you want to read about the 21 moats. But all of a sudden, we were like, oh my gosh, we've got another moat, and it's the most important one, except for Elon Musk himself. And that was the flexibility moat, their ability to turn on a dime, the pivot when necessary. So that would be a perfect example that you're talking about. Oh, we have extra batteries over here. Okay, put them into uh, more semi trucks or put them into more. Uh, energy storage or put them into or Tesla boats or yeah, whatever Tesla. So you have all this flexibility. Oh, we have, we don't have the, there's not enough semiconductors. Oh, let's see. We'll just go five. We'll use this semiconductor and we'll change it while everybody else is, Oh, throwing up their arms and they don't know what to do. <laughs> so the flexibility mode is just massive. Um, so I, you know, that's just one more. And, and so, yeah, so I, I did a, quickie analysis, one of those back of the napkin deals. Mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, how about a hundred billion in profit for the cars? And that counts Cybertruck in 2030, mm -hmm. hundred billion. That, that's mm -hmm. very makeable. A hundred billion mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in income, I'm sorry, in profits for the mega packs. And mm -hmm. that counts power walls. I'll count both power walls and mega packs together. And then a hundred billion dollars in semi truck. People don't even, nobody talks about the semi truck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, Four million large trucks sold per year in the world. So I just want Tesla to do their normal 25% share. So that'd be a, a million um, so, uh, uh, of the semi trucks a year. Well, that would probably give them 100 billion in profits in the semi truck because they're going to be 250 to $350,000 a piece. So, anyway, so there's another 100 billion. So that's just in products that they're already actually making, that are already working. That we mm -hmm. already know that they have. So it's 300 billion in profit. How much is yeah. Apple's profit right now? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I don't... Around 100 billion. So okay. that's three yeah. apples. So that's three apples just with those three product lines. <laughs> yeah, that's that's crazy. And I think it's a good opportunity to show this again. Uh, how much? Uh, yeah, how, how much revenue they generated uh, here? And yeah, it's it's still in comparison to what what they can achieve. It's still very low and it's interesting to see that 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 uh yeah like you said they have those projects in the pipeline that's important and if they start to make money then we're gonna see more of the green bars here <laughs> actually the green bars are gonna expand here to say it very simply and yeah that's it's absolutely astonishing so